Hello and welcome to this Revit software training video. In this video, we will take you through the basics of Revit, which is a building information modeling software used for architectural, engineering and construction projects. This software is also a product of Autodesk company and nowadays this software is superseding the AutoKit, which is widely used software in the field of architecture and civil engineering. Revit and AutoCAD are both powerful software tools for architecture, engineering and construction professionals, but they have different strengths and are designed for different purposes. Revit is a building information modeling software that enables designers to create a detailed 3D model of a building and its components and allows for collaborative designs, accurate documentations and efficient project management. Revit is particularly useful for complex projects that acquire a higher degree of coordination and integration of different systems and disciplines. On the other hand, AutoCAD is a computer edit design software that is widely used for 2D drafting and detailing and for creating technical drawings and plans. AutoCAD is especially used for simpler projects that require accurate and precise 2D drawings such as site plans, elevations and sections. So overall, Revit is based for complex projects that require th detailed 3D modeling and collaborations, while AutoCAD is best for simple projects that require accurate 2D drafting and detailing. Ultimately, the choice between Revit and AutoCAD depends on the specific needs of the project and the preference of the user. Now, let's discuss from where you can get the software. You can download the software by typing Autodesk Revit search bar and by clicking the first option here you can download the free trial of this software or you can log into the ID and request for the student version of the software and the license would be valid for one year. In this video we will be learning how to draw the floor plans, how to draw the layout plan Similarly, how to capture the 3D views from different angles and perspectives. We will learn how to create elevations. And finally, and sections of the building. And then the most important part is scheduling, where we can calculate the number of inventory required in this project. After that, we will develop number of sheets in order to hand over the project to the client. So let's begin. Before that, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. In order to create a new file, go to the file tab and press new. So now here you need to choose a template file. There are a number of template files installed in this Revit software. Most of the time we work out in an architectural template, so just click this one and then press OK. The Revit interface consists of various tools and features that make designing and creating a BIM model easy and efficient. Let's take a look some of the basic tools and features. The ribbon is primary menu in Revit that contains all tools and features you need to create a BIM model. The ribbon is divided into various tabs such as architecture, structure, steel, systems, insert, anode, view, manage, and modify. Most of the time we'll be working in an architecture tab. After that, the important window is the project browser. So project browser is a tool that allows you to access all the views and sheets in your project. You can create new views and sheets and organize them into folders for easy access. And then we have got the properties menu. The properties menu is where you can access and modify the properties of elements in your model such as walls, doors, windows, and roof. You can also use this menu to add and modify parameters. This white space is the working area where you will create your model. On this working area, you can see these four milestones. Actually, these stones are the cameras, which will give you the view of your project from all four directions. For example, east, north, south and west. You can also delete or add 
these views according to your choice. Also, you can drag and reposition the location of the cameras. So, this is the basic overview of the Revit interface. In order to start the project, we need to do some primary settings in our model. So, the primary settings can be done by clicking the Manage tab and then press on the additional settings. After that, select temporary dimensions and from here select faces instead of center lines and for door and windows we need to select openings and then press ok now let's see how to use the commands in order to draw the wall in our plan we can click to this icon which is wall or you can also press we from the keyboard which is the short key for this wall command once you click the wall command, a basic wall would be activated. Once the wall command is activated, then we can click to the edit type. And every time, whatever the system family you are initiating, we need to create a duplicate because we don't want to change the dimensions of the existing family or component. So that is why creating a duplicate is the important part. So press duplicate and write down a new name for this wall. For example, I am using the name wall 6 inches. After changing the name, now come to this construction tab. Here, press the edit and also change the dimensions here. So, thickness of wall instead of 8 inches, it's 6 inches. And then press OK. Before drawing the wall, now you can see some parameters are written here. So height or depth means whether your wall should go height wise or depth wise. This tab, it actually represents the levels. That means what is the base level of your wall and the end level of, the, of your wall. Or you can also write down the height of the wall manually by pressing a digit here. After that, we have got a location line that means from where your wall should be initiated. From the center of the wall or finish face exterior, finish face interior. So this is very important because it actually controls the dimension of your plan. Now let's see how to draw the wall. I want to draw the wall of 10 feet. Just click and then write down 10 feet from the keyboard and press enter. Now I am interested to draw the wall of 15 feet. Now the blue dotted line which is running along the center line of the wall. This line is known as the location line. You can also change the position of this location line by clicking the various options shown here. For example, if you choose the finish face interior, now the location line would be starting from the interior of the wall. You can also control this location line by pressing the space from the keyboard. Now this is actually the exterior of the wall. Now let's draw a room of 10 feet by 10 feet. Wall command is still activated, so write down 10 feet. Now 10 feet by 10 feet, that means the interior dimension of the room should be 10 feet by 10 feet. Now again, the location line is with respect to interior wall, so that means this is correct. Now here you can also check the dimension of the wall by pressing this uh, wall. Now you can see this, the interior dimension of the wall is 10 feet and horizontally it is also 10 feet. Along these dimension tab, you can see these two small bubbles. So these bubbles actually can control the range of the dimension. For example, if you click the bubble here, so you can take the dimensions from exterior wall to the another exterior wall. Or if you are interested to see the dimension from center to center of the wall, so by just pressing these two bubbles, you can read the dimensions accordingly. Now since we know how to draw the wall in our plan, now let's develop a real home plan consists of various levels. For that I need to switch to the AutoCAD. Now this is the plan draw in, in the Revit model and the area is around 46 feet by approximately 39 or 40 feet. So before drawing this plan in a Revit we need to first define the levels. In order to define the levels we will go to the project browser tab and within the project browser click to the north and here you can see the wall which we have constructed is being shown here and the height of wall is exceeding our levels. So now we need to define the levels first. So within our building plan we have got multiple levels. First the base of the foundation and after that we have got the ground level 
and then we have got the plinth level which is the gr first ground level of a house then first floor plan second floor plan roof tower or a stair tower and then finally the water tank so let's draw these levels in our plan so in order to draw the levels go to the architecture tab and within the architecture tab you can see the levels shown here so click level here and press the line now if normally our fade of the footing is 5 feet below the natural ground level so so we will draw a new level at 5 feet below the ground level so first select the distance you can also write the distance from the keyboard and then just press ok so in this manner you can add a new level now let's name this level as a footing level every time whenever you add a level's name don't forget to write a number because it will show your all floor plans in ascending order now let's add a few more levels in our plan so after footing level we have got ground level and that is located at zero feet i'm just writing natural ground level so after natural ground level we have got plinth level again in a similar manner go to the architecture tab then press level and our print level is located at uh, plus 3 feet 6 inches from the ground level now rename this level 5 as plinth level After plinth level, we need to add uh, first floor. So now existing level 2 is at 6 feet 6 inches from the plinth level. So we can also to change the dimensions of this level directly. For example, I want to keep the height of the floor as 12 feet and it will automatically change the height of level 2. Now also rename this level as first floor. Again add another level which is second level floor or you can name it as roof level after roof level we need to add another level that is stair tower and stair tower is normally located at 8 feet And as I say to you that uh, the level should start from a number. So this is 5 and another level is 6. Also rename this level as stair tower. And finally uh, the new level and name it as water tank which is at 4 feet from the stair tower or 5 feet from the stair tower make it 4 feet now we have added all the levels in our floor plan you can also see all the levels in a project browser within the floor plan tapes so after defining the levels now we will draw the floor plans at each level so guys this brings to the end of Revit part 1 tutorial in the next part we will be discussing how to draw floor plans in the Revit software if you find this tutorial useful Please do like and share and if you have any doubts please write in the comment section. For more updates please subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.